Oh God, our Father, you brought us again to this glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old and open our lips that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. This is the word of prophecy. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be his on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's join our voices together as we sing, O come, O long expected Jesus. And as we sing, we will relight the candle of peace. <laughs>
words of fulfillment. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Did you hear it? Our Advent clock is ticking away, and it's almost at the end. Things are moving. Seemingly unconnected things are all moving, and they're moving to meet in a little town in Judea. But all these things are connected. They're all connected, and, and they connect all the way back to Abraham and Sarah and God's promise. And then they're connected to Isaac and Jacob. And then there's Rahab and Ruth, Tamar. There's Bathsheba and David. And they're connected with the prophets. And of course, they're connected with Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, along with their child, John, to become the baptizer. And of course, now it's connected all the way to Joseph and Mary. So how do we bring all of these things together? Enter Octavian. <laughs> In his vanity, he calls for a census so that he can show off the vastness of his empire. I think it's really interesting that God often uses the lowly and even his enemies to do his will. And so the very decree that Caesar issues is what begins the final tick of our Advent clock. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our Advent anticipation is now over. Christ has arrived. God enters his creation the very way that you and I enter it, as a baby. However, this baby shines, shines with divinity. But at this very moment, to the rest of the world, this little baby is just a little baby, born of meager parents. Mary lays Jesus in a clean straw. She brushes his cheek. And then she snuggles down into a little bed that Joseph has made for her, and she closes her eyes, and she sighs, and she becomes a teenager again, and she sleeps. Joseph, our wonderful, faithful, righteous Joseph, he sits, he watches, and he protects his family. It's Christmas, the first Christmas, and Jesus our salvation is now among us. Oh, how right and quiet is the world. For the gift promised over the centuries has been now given on this very holy night. If you would, uh, if you would join us as we light together the candle of love, O little town of Bethlehem.
O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen.
words of announcement. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, <clears throat> keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favors rest. It's Christmas Day. The silence of the night is now shattered. God will never be silent again. And now, here comes Gabriel. Gabriel again. And what is he doing? He's singing. And he sings good tidings of great joy for all people. But who receives this marvelous news? Not the mighty, not the wealthy, not even the influential. Not kings or even high church leaders. But the news comes to shepherds. Lowly, lowly shepherds. The common worker who in this world don't deserve a second look. But God chose them to receive the good news first. Why? Because it's of whom they represent. They represent all of the nameless souls of the world, all of the people without position, without privilege. They represent us. And then the earth trembles, did you hear it? As the heavenly hosts cry out their song, glory to God in the highest heavens, and peace to the people with whom God is well pleased. May we be in prayer. Who are we, Lord God, that you should come to us? Yet you have visited your people and redeemed us in your Son. As we prepare to celebrate his birth, make our hearts leap for joy at the sound of your word, and move us by your Spirit to bless your wonderful works. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me as we sing Hark the Herald Angel Sings?
of adoration. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So what do you do when an angel of the Lord reveals a new thing to you? Do you hide? Do you run away? We must do as the shepherds did, go and see. And once we go and see and that is revealed to us, once we see that truth is now ringing loudly in the world, we first praise God, fall on our knees. He is our holy, holy one. Then we make this good news known across the land. You see, the key line that Linda just read was, when they had seen these things, they made known abroad which was told to them concerning the child. We must never, never, never keep good news to ourselves. We need to always go and tell. Let us be in prayer. Glory be to you, our Father Almighty, who has given us your only begotten Son, that we might live through him. Glory be to you, O Lord Jesus Christ, who became human, that we might become children of God. Glory be to you, O Holy Spirit, who directs and rules our hearts. All glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Would you join us as we sing, O come all ye faithful.
to this moment in time um, for communion. We always have communion whenever we come together. It, it brings us and binds us together. Um, for those that uh, have never worshipped with us or are our visitors today, when the trays come around, there will be two cups put together. Uh, just take both cups. One has the cracker and one has the juice, and we will take everything, uh, the, the elements together. So just hang on to them. I would like to, though, I read this uh, a week or two ago, and I just thought it was so profound that to start to prepare ourselves for taking this wonderful feast that Jesus uh, gave to us, that uh, here are these words. Within our communion, Christ is still Emmanuel. He is still God with us. Communion both satisfies our yearning for Christ, but it also instills in us a deeper yearning for him. Christ is with us, and yet our communion feast increases our desire for his second coming, when there will be no longer be signs or symbols or sacraments, but only God. God who will be with us all in all. But until that time, we wait patiently to be united with the incarnate, the crucified, and the risen Christ through our communion. So gathered here, we anticipate his coming, even as we receive him into our hearts and into our bodies, the food and the drink that sustains us until that glorious return.
There's a presence here I can tell. God is in us. God is for us. God is with us. Emmanuel. He's a Savior we have been praying for. In our humble hearts He will dwell. God is in You're the Savior we have been praying for. In our humble hearts you will dwell. You are in us. You are for us. You are with us. Amen. For I receive from the Lord what I also now hand on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And then he said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And then in the same way, he took a cup after supper and he said, this is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and that you drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. like this. Let's raise our voices together. Enjoy to the world.
and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you in the same spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Word of treasure. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. This is the light of life. This is the light of truth. And this light, this life and this truth now lives among us, dwells among us. I now pass this light on to you. If you'd like to rise for the singing of Silent Night and if you would 
turn on your candles. Through Jesus Christ, we pray and all God's children say,